Hey, welcome to Yo-Yo Talk and Happy New Year and hopefully happy better year as well. Um, although it doesn't really seem to be starting out that way. Uh, hopefully we'll be all safe and virus free here in a, a few months. So, um, so anyway, our last two shows were pre-recorded and we are now back to live. And the fact is we had over 5,000 views on our Christmas episode and hardly anybody watching it live. So that makes me think people don't like watching me live. But I enjoy running our trivia contest, so it's very difficult to do those trivia contests without an actual live show. So for the time being, we are going to continue to run our shows as live as we can, much to the displeasure of those that like watching them at three in the morning. So one bit of good news for the start of the new year for Yo-Yo Talk is that we just had our 200th member join our little Yo-Yo Talk group. Congratulations to Tina Long for our 200th group member. And as our 200th member, we are going to give you a little surprise gift of a signed Lucky's periodic table of Yo-Yo's most folks hang this amazing piece of artwork in their living room or on their yo-yo room wall. The Nickinator, I understand, hangs his on the ceiling over his bed so he can study it at night right before he falls asleep. Anyway, that's what he says he's doing with it. So, and for our other viewers, please don't forget to sign up to the Doc Lucky's Yo-Yo Talks group page. That's where all the groovy people hang out at. If you are a new viewer to the show, please let us know in the comment section. Our old viewers always enjoy the opportunity to harass and haze all our new viewers. Now, even with the trivia contest being pre-recorded, we still hosted them in the last two episodes. And last week, the Nickinator was back with vengeance, taking home that prize package of Duncan gear. Uh, he was in O-Town for the holidays, so he wanted to take the opportunity to try on his Doc Lucky's Trivia Contest champion shirt so he would get the correct size because he was concerned. Sean was recommending an extra small for him. And lo and behold, it turns out Sean has yo-yo trivia envy issues. Uh, the Nickinator required a few sizes larger than Sean tried to pawn off on him. So it's good he did not trust Sean's recommendation. Just a reminder to all those out there that wish they had one of those champion shirts. Uh, there will only be one given to the Nickinator, so uh, you still have a chance to take home one of those if you win a contest prize. Uh, Nick was able to answer the question, what person was featured on this 60s yo-yo and this person's eye patch was put on sale for eBay for a mere $75,000? Kind of makes you wonder what an old jock strap of his was worth. I will have to defer that question to Sean as I only collect yo-yos. That was Moshe Dayan, uh, the Israeli general from the 60s. If you're old, you'll remember who he was and his eye patch, but not his jock strap. Uh, never months ago, uh, several months ago, uh, I took a poll to see who uh, folks wanted to see most on the show. And as I recall, our number one viewer choice was none other than Dr. Tom Kuhn of the Tom Kuhn Yo-Yo fame. As you are probably aware, he is a member of the National Yo-Yoing Hall of Fame and he has made some of the most collectible yo-yos of the modern era. So I got a hold of Tom and unfortunately, he works one day a week. He's still a dentist and at 78, he's still practicing one day a week. But that day, of course, is Thursdays. And he doesn't usually get home till 8 p.m., which is actually like 11 p.m. our time. So uh, the show is while he's still at work. So um, 
He was willing to come on and do an interview, so next week I am going to interview him for the record, and we will have him on that interview on the show next week. So I want you guys now who have asked him to come on the show to tonight comment in the comment section and ask us what questions you would like us to ask Dr. Tom Kuhn. And um, so anyway, I'll submit those questions to him and that gives him a chance to think about them before I interview him and make up some good lies. So uh, start writing those questions now in the comments section and I will go on and pass them on to, to Tom. Okay, let's look at what's in our prize package for our pop quiz near the end of the show. Sean, let's go on and run that prize package. Let's take a look at these collectible treasures which are in our prize package for this evening. We've got a bunch of great stuff for the winner of the pop quiz which will be near the end of the show. Here we have the novel, The Immune, which if they would just read this to all preschoolers, the world would be a better place in the end, I am sure of it. And over here we have a Lucky's Collector's Guide to 20th Century Yo-Yos, a must-have book for all yo-yo collectors. And this here is the hidden gem in this prize package for tonight. This is a Super Mario Brothers Legend of Zelda yo-yo and Nintendo by Spectra Star. This yo-yo is going off if there's one yo-yo amongst the Spectra Stars that is doing quite well value-wise in collectability. It is this yo-yo. $47 in package, $30 loose something to pay attention of. So don't think for a minute those Spectra Star yo-yos aren't going to be going up in value in the future. You heard it here first on Yo-Yo Talk. And here we have a Hummingbird Yo-Yo Man. Obviously this is Tommy Smothers. Back in the mid-80s he came out with his Yo-Yo Man character. This was arguably the tinder that set the fire for the start of the modern yo-yo craze. Definitely one to have in your collection. And speaking of one not to have in your collection, here is some kind of bumblebee wooden yo-yo, but I'm throwing that in anyway. There's a Sir Duncan spin top from the 60s. Those hold their value pretty well. Here's a very nice early Pro Yo, also nice to have in the collection. And next to that, for all you string pack collectors, which there are about three of us worldwide, uh, there is a Coca Cola string pack that's on a blister card. I prefer the old Russell string packs, even though they're in the plastic bags. The glassine envelopes are, of course, the best ones, but that's just my preference. And here is a Hot Wheels yo-yo. This is, of course, a Mattel product from the Hot Wheels little toy cars. This was released in the early 90s. These sell for about $10 a pop. And there's four different wheel styles. I actually have a pair of Hot Wheel tennis shoes, which I really like. Much better than the yo-yo, actually. And here are a couple of sealish yo-yos, but in there, there are some Duncan blanks, which are perfect for practicing your yo-yo carving skills. And oh, there's a Duncan tournament cross flags. Again, a must have for any yo-yo collector. You may notice this is pink in color and made specifically to market towards the fairer sex, and I don't think they made quite as many in this color, so they made those are a little bit more valuable in some collector's eyes. So let's take a look at the value of this treasure trove of collectibles, which you will be winning if you answer the correct answer in the pop quiz later in the show. Sean will not be doing the valuation tonight because he has screwed it up twice real bad in the past. So, let's see what that value is. Wow, $232. Good luck to everyone. All right, so that's our prize package. Uh, I guess a few shout outs, thanks to Bob Rule, who is watching right now. The 
Yo-Yo Legend himself. Uh, he helped me with one of my subjects I'm talking about later this evening. Couldn't have done it without you, Bob. Thank you very much. Uh, Dano, Tim, John, Rick, some of our regular viewers are out there watching. Uh, Earl's on and John Yang, uh, thank you for watching. Um, if you're a new viewer, please uh, shout out and let us know you're watching. Uh, so tonight I'm going to be talking a lot about the Yo-Yoing Hall of Fame. We do have our 10 finalists selected and I'll be going through each one of those individuals a little bit later in the show. And in a minute or two we're going to run our lightning round uh, trivia contest. But first I wanted to talk about a few of the goodies folks got for Christmas. Um, if you did get some goodies from Santa or from some significant other, please share your photos with us because we want to see them. So anyway, Dano got this very cool, and I guess it's pronounced pocket yo-yo. It's got that H in there. Um, I think this was probably from his girlfriend. He didn't tell me, but uh, she's a very good, cool person, so I wouldn't doubt it. Uh, but Dano can chime in, chime in on who the wonderful gifter was. And if it was your girlfriend, Dano, she deserves something in a little blue Tiffany box. And that could be just about anything other than their yo-yo. Trust me, that would be the only Tiffany item which would not go over well with her, I'm sure. At least I'm speaking, speaking from a personal experience. Uh, this is, as I recall, a signature model of um, Ed uh, Hapenick, uh, who, uh, and it's an old school wood axle yo-yo, and I understand there's quite a good throw for an old school uh, wood axle yo-yo. I don't know if they still make these, but I recall those were like 80 bucks or more just bought retail. So very fine Christmas gift there for Dano. Uh, John Mahan uh, scored this beautiful wood yo-yo. It's a spin, uh, yo-yo spin. Uh, it's a Davidson yo-yo. Said his mom gave him this yo-yo for Christmas, so you know he has one great mom. Uh, those yo-yos of Ed's are uh, quite a bit of a piece of artwork, so if you don't have any of those uh, yo-yo spin yo-yos, you should get some in your uh, collection. So check them out. My wife, who everybody around here refers to as Saint Jackie, has lived up to her reputation by finding me these very cool presents for Christmas. Uh, Santa Claus may have helped her out a bit in her choices, but they were most excellent. Uh, the first item I want to show you is this magazine. It's a cover from a 1932 German magazine, and as you can see, it has a lot of gentlemen playing the yo-yo. This was during the craze that went on in Europe in the early 30s. Both Duncan and Cheerio were over there at that time promoting their yo-yos. So it was huge not only in England, but it was huge in Paris and apparently was huge in Germany too. Now this next item uh, comes from England. Uh, it is a 19th century graphite pencil drawing uh, showing a lady playing her yo-yo, and it is very difficult to find yo-yo artwork during the Bandalore era, but it does serve as a reminder, not only the kids played with yo-yos, but adults used it as a pastime too, as well. Uh, if any viewers have images during the pre-yo-yo times, this is prior to 1928 when Pedro Flores introduced uh, the uh, word yo-yo to the United States, I, I call this the Bandalore era. Uh, please share them with us. We'd love to take a look at them. So, um, okay, well, I think it's about time to get to our lightning round quiz before we get into talking about our Hall of Fame nominees. But before we run the lightning round quiz, it's of vital importance to know what you'll be playing for. I know some of you want to make sure that the prizes are comment-worthy value, meaning that you don't want to use up all the ATP in your fingers typing in answers if the prize is not effort-worthy. So, Sean, let's show what our viewers have to look forward to and see if this is ATP-worthy. Okay, in keeping with our discussion for the National Yo-Yoing Hall of Fame, 
We have a very special prize for our lightning round tonight. This is a highly unique and rare prize. The amazing thing is I actually had two of these. This is a signed photograph of yo-yoing Hall of Famer Gus Samara. He was a Duncan yo-yoing legend and demonstrator, and he worked for many other companies throughout his lifetime as well, demonstrating the yo-yo. And of course, he is one of the Hall of Famers. Uh, my hope is that we have a very hardcore yo-yo collector out there score this one-of-a-kind prize. Uh, you won't see one of these coming up, again, as a prize package, because uh, I've only got like one other one. So good luck to you all in this. A reminder on the rules of the lightning round, you put your answer in the comments section. The winner will be our tentative winner or our Simcoe. We will not know our official winner until the end of the show when we check out the time code. Uh, in this particular lightning round, you may answer more than once, but you must answer no quicker than 10 seconds apart because I just don't want to make this the first person that can type in the most numbers. If you find you have been, um, if we check and find that you've been answering uh, faster than 10 seconds, you will be disqualified. So carefully think about your answer before you write down and check your stopwatch to make sure you're not answering too quickly. And also don't put in answers that other people have already entered. Uh, that pretty much guarantees you're not going to win. So, okay, Sean, let's run that lightning round question right now. This yo-yo carved by Gus Samara weighs how many grams? Your answer must be within two grams of the actual weight. So this is another one of those weighing yo-yo questions. Um, that was carved by Gus Samara, so that's an idea of his very cool artwork that he used on the yo-yos. So, see if we're getting any answers coming in here. I know everyone is rooting against the Nickinator, but I can assure you he will win if others don't put in answers. Uh, he has already, I can assure you, done some kind of mathematical calculation on the best way of winning this one, and he is working through his math right now. So he has a formula, I'm sure, already figured out, but I believe very firmly that crowdsourcing can beat the Nickinator on a rare occasion if the stars are in the correct lineage. So um, good luck in beating the Nickinator, and I'm sure he's probably already answered several times by now every 10 seconds, precisely. And Dano is doing the same thing. Dano and the Nickinator apparently are going at it. Are we getting close, Sean? Um, not, really. not really close yet. So we know I Dano and the Nickinator are starting to get there. Starting to get there. So other people need to throw in numbers too. It's anybody's. You don't have to know a lot of trivia to get this one. It's just about being oh, lucky. Wow. Luck. You said within two, right? Within two. Within two. God, I Oh, no. Tell me it's not the Nickinator with his mathematical formulas. Look, he knew I got my beer and my hat all rooting against him. But here I am. Sean is rooting against the Nickinator, but it sounds like Sean's building us up for the fact that... Yeah, it is. It is the Nickinator once again. Ah, oh, sorry to all you hardcore collectors out there. Hold on, hold on. Don't, Wait. Don't, don't. Yeah, okay. Well, so he is the Simcoe. He is our tentative winner. Uh, so congratulations, Nickinator. You are the tentative winner once again for the millionth time. And we will check at the end of the show. But I hope he and, and what's that? But I hope he uh, But Sean is totally rooting against you, I, I want to say. I'm trying to keep very unbiased here, but Sean hates your guts, Sean just so you know. <laughs> so anyway. Um, so anyway, Hall of Famer Gus Samara is a good segue into what I'm going to be talking about tonight for, um, this is our 10 nominees for the Hall of Fame. Uh, the 10 finalists have been selected. Just a reminder, three of these were automatic selections into the finalists due to the total number of nominations that they received. Um, 
For those that aren't familiar with the process, anybody can make a nomination, and we had over 70 individuals make nominations, so thanks to all those folks that put nominations in. Uh, the nominees that were automatic, uh, of course, were just the ones we just showed you there, John Gates, Chuck Shore, and, uh, Shore and uh, Dave Schulte. Um, in addition to these three that were automatically put in, the other 15 nominees went into a pool and the executive committee selected seven other individuals to make up the rest of the 10 finalists. Pause for a second. You didn't say the answer again. Oh, I'm sorry. The answer was 42 grams. I'm sorry. Yeah, I kind of glossed over that. I just thought, well. Paul Dresser, John Gates, he called you out on it. What's that? Paul Dresser, John Gates, he called you out on it. Thanks for keeping me honest, John. This was John Gates making sure that we were honest. I keep forgetting to get the answers to the question. We just uh, look and see what the Nickinator wrote down. That's a good way to find out what the answers of the questions are. So anyway, uh, it was 42 grams. So, um, so where were we were talking about? Oh, oh, the, um, so the seven other individuals that were making up the 10 finalists, uh, the decisions were kind of made based on, uh, first of all, everybody had to be involved in the sport for at least 10 years you know, kind of your, their standings in the yo-yo community and the co contributions they've made over the decades uh, to the sport and hobby. Now, in saying that, I want to let everybody know, I believe all the nominations that were nominated were certainly worthy being in the yo-yoing Hall of Fame, with perhaps the exception of Antoine Brown, who nobody seems to know who that is. Um, but, and there were plenty of people that weren't nominated that I'm sure will be in the Hall of Fame in the future. So um, uh, don't despair if you didn't see your person get in that 10 finalist. I'm sure they will eventually uh, end up in the uh, Hall of Fame based on uh, uh, what I know about all these folks. So um, I was, I'm pretty sure you're going to see all these again So for consideration. So the executive committee was made up of myself, Bob Maloney, um, Joe Mitchell, Bob had to be kicked off the executive committee because he was a nominee. And I am sure, knowing Bob, he would have advocated for everybody but himself. So to be fair, we had to remove him from the committee. And we put Dale Oliver, uh, of course, a yo-yoing legend and in the Hall of Fame, in his position. Uh, now, as myself acting as the chairman of the committee, I don't make any nominations nor will I vote for anybody in the final selection process to keep this as impartial and fair as possible. I am also the only one who will uh, see who made the nominations and how the voting was done, and this information will not be released uh, ever. So, so our 10 finalists for the uh, uh, 2020, I'm going to start going through them. Um, uh, these will be voted on by the members of the Academy of Yo-Yo Arts. That link, well, actually, the link is going to be up shortly after the show. We don't have it up yet. We're going to wait till the show is shown, uh, and then we'll put it up. You'll have basically till the end of February to get your uh, uh, votes in, and you can still join the Academy of uh, Yo-Yo Arts. You have to be involved in the sport for at least five years and made some sort of contribution uh, to the sport, and you kind of know who you are, so um, just be aware of that. Uh, living members of the Hall of Fame will also be sent voting links as well. Um, so each Academy member will vote for three individuals uh, that they think are worthy of being uh, the inductees. The three that end up with the highest percentage of votes will be selected as our 2020 uh, inductees for the National Yo-Yoing Hall of Fame. Now I'm going to go through each of the finalists and say a few words about each of them. I've tried to take most of the information off that Yo-Yo wiki, uh, so I'm not inserting personal views, although I love everybody that's on this list. I think they're all awesome and they should all, and probably all will be eventually in the National Yo-Yoing Hall of Fame. And these nominees are in no particular order, it's just how they just ended up on my computer. So. Starting with John Gates. Uh, John is considered the father of off-string yo-yo play and is known as the, which is, uh, that's of course Division 4A in Nationals and Worlds, and he's been a fixture on the yo-yoing uh, national and world scene. 
His innovations led to the development of the off-string division of play, and he has competed in multiple national and world championships, and has held uh, yo-yoing world records, and produces his own line of custom yo-yo. So that was John Gates. Uh, Chuck Short. Uh, Chuck uh, was a major influence in the yo-yo scene in the 90s and early 2000s. He was a member of Team High Performance and was a professional yo-yo demonstrator for multiple companies. He was a columnist for Fiend Magazine, and he was even featured on the cover of one of the Fiend Magazines, if you'll remember that. Uh, his signature yo-yo is a Tom Coon 3-in-1 no-jive raw. So that was Chuck Short. Uh, Dave Schulte, a.k.a. Dazzling Dave, is a U.S. national yo-yo master. He started working professionally with Team High Performance and demonstrated professionally then after that for many other companies. He has multiple signature yo-yo models and he currently owns his own yo-yo company where he continues to promote yo-yos. He is a current yo-yoing world record holder and he has a massive yo-yo collection too. So that is Dave Schulte. Uh, Bob Maloney, I think uh, you recognize as a key influencer in the promotion of the yo-yo for the last four decades. He re-energized the yo-yoing competitive scene first with organizing the California State Championships in the 80s and then the U.S. National Championships starting in 1993, which is held for decades in Chico, California. Bob is also the director of the National Yo-Yo Museum and he's a major uh, influencer in the uh, development of the National Yo-Yo League, and he was also involved in the American Yo-Yo Association, too, as well. So uh, that is Bob. Uh, Jimmy Johnson, uh, he started with the yo-yos back in the 50s as a Duncan Jr. instructor, and he's basically spent a lifetime promoting and competing and demonstrating the yo-yo. He was a fixture as a judge in the national and world championships, and I know he's judged in more than 20 major championship uh, events. Uh, he is a world record holder, and he has served on the board of the American Yo-Yo Association, and he also has a massive, massive uh, yo-yo collection as well. And he plays a mean bagpipe, too. Um, Alan Nagal is the owner of High Performance Kites in Hawaii. He is considered the mastermind of the last great yo-yo craze, which happened in 1998 and 1999. He was a yo-yo player himself, and he was also the founder and brainchild of the legendary yo-yo demonstration team, Team High Performance. His biggest yo-yo event in Tokyo drew 78 thousand spectators. And he's not to be confused with his also famous son, Evan N N Nagal, who is um, a former world yo-yo champion. So he's keeping it in the family. So that was Alan Nagal. Uh, Steve Brown, the father and inventor of freehand counterweight play, aka that's Division 5A for those that go by the letter number of divisions. Um, He's a national master player as well, and he's been a major influencer in the yo-yo community for the last three decades. Uh, probably one of the most visible performers in the community. He is a professional entertainer. He's a demonstrator for multiple companies. He's an innovator. He has competed and judged on the national and world level and has appeared in mainstream movies and multiple instructional videos. He runs yoyonews.com and has more accolades than can be briefly summarized in one paragraph. So that is Steve Brown, not to be confused with Antoine Brown. Uh, Jennifer Baybrook, AKA Yo-Yo Princess, although I don't think she goes by that anymore, is the only female national masters and uh, she started playing and demonstrating, I believe at age eight years old, uh, she is the only woman to win the national and world titles competing in the Open Division, and that being the World 2A champion. Um, that was in 1998. She won Worlds, and at the end of 97, she won Nationals, and she's the first one to hold both titles simultaneously. So 
She was a member of THP and has demonstrated professionally for many companies. She currently works for Duncan. Um, that was Jennifer Baybrook. Bill Calf, uh, one of the early Duncan professional demonstrators for the Cheerio Yo-Yo Company. Um, he switched uh, companies in 1954. I suspect that was because Duncan uh, took over Cheerio around that time. Uh, he worked alongside Yo-Yoing Hall of Fame uh, legend Barney Akers. Um, his work was being one of the lead demonstrators during that um, peak of yo-yoing craze during the uh, 50s. That was right before all the television promotions took over, um, kind of replacing some of that hands-on experience. And Bill, I didn't realize this, I was talking to um, Bob earlier today, he is alive and well at 94. So. Uh, that's got to be one of our older demonstrators still around. So that is Bill Kaff. Um, Hans von Danelsen, of course, is a fixture in the yo-yo community for the last three decades. He is best known for being um, a yo-yo manufacturer and in many ways. He was the owner of Playmax and now currently the famous yo-yo factory. He's a national class finalist yo-yo player. He's a demonstrator, an innovator, and he has also held multiple Guinness yo-yo world records. He's got one very interesting thing. His song, Walk the Dog Like an Egyptian, was ranked as high as number 48 in the UK pop chart in 1998. Uh, he does have a love for the history of the yo-yo, along with a very massive yo-yo collection. Okay, so there you have it. Those are our 10 finalists for the National Yo-Yoing Hall of Fame for 2020. Uh, members of the Academy of Yo-Yo Arts may vote for three of these finalists. I will make sure that is posted tonight in the, National, uh, in the Academy of Yo-Yo Arts group page. Um, I'm thanking God I don't have to make a decision on who to vote for because every one of these guys and gals is worthy of being in the Hall of Fame. And um, just to mention, as I said before, uh, anybody can join that is worthy and has been involved in uh, the sport for five years. Uh, so please go on and join and take part in the voting for our inductees for 2020. And as I said, I'll get that link posted later on tonight. So be looking for that to pop up later tonight. Okay, it's about time to have our pop quiz. Uh, you should have already seen what our prize package is. It's a lot of good stuff there for the Nickinator <laughs> to win. Uh, but you know, the Nickinator I think has been bitching about not having enough closet space. So help the Nickinator out. Win one for him, okay? Help him with his closet space. Okay, as always, please remember to answer both questions correctly in the same comment section. That will be our winner, but they will be our tentative winner or our Simcoe. We will let you know at the end of the show if you are our official winner. Okay, Sean, let's jump right into the trivia contest. Let's roll it. Doc Lucky's Pop Quiz. One shot. One champion. First, to answer both questions in the Facebook comments wins. Get ready. What country released the Duncan Dinosaur Series? Ah, this wasn't released actually in the United States. And what is the name of this famous yo-yo newsletter? You should be able to tell that just by scanning one quick peek at that. It should just come to mind if you know any of your yo-yo history. It's an important newsletter that really impacted I think the yo-yo world back in the uh, 80s and 90s. So this first question is what country released the Duncan Dinosaur Series? I think those are very cool yo-yos. And if you have any of those yo-yos, duplicates, I would always be interested in trading for some of those. And what is the name of this famous yo-yo newsletter? Are we getting... We got it. 
We got an answer already. Oh, well, don't keep us in suspense here, Sean. Who came up with those two correct answers first? Uh oh, we're just having some hesitation here from Sean. Because usually when the Simcoe is the Simcoe, he doesn't win. Oh, is the Simcoe is the Simcoe tonight? Which is sad because, as Sean said, when the Simcoe is the Simcoe, that means he usually is Simcoed by the Nickinator at the end. But we will see. We will see. Good luck to you, Simcoe. I hope that uh, you are not Simcoed by yourself um, tonight. So we will see at the end of the show. Oh, I better give the answers or John Gates will crack the whip on me. Um, the answers were Germany. That was a German release. And those yo-yos are very cool. I love those dinosaur yo-yos. So I'm serious about that. If you've got some duplicates of your dinosaur series there, well, let me know. We can do some serious trading. And the other answer, of course, was Yo-Yo Times, the famous newsletter by Stuart Crump. And that went on for years. He was kind of the lifeblood of, of yo-yoing uh, until the internet came. So uh, uh, those are uh, good historic questions right there. Congratulations, Simcoe. We'll see if you are the winner uh, tonight. So, um, so uh, again, don't forget to vote. If you're a member of the Academy of Yo-Yo Arts, get those votes in as soon as you can. But you do have all month to get them in, and I'll get that uh, link posted for doing the voting uh, here, hopefully within the next hour. Um, and just a reminder, nobody will be able to see who you voted for, so no worries about hurting folks' feelings when you vote. Uh, next week, again, we have the legendary Tom Kuhn on our show. Uh, we are going to have an interview with him beforehand. I need those questions, so be sure to write those in the comments sections. Uh, we want to have great questions for Tom when I take time to interview him early next week. If you have not already signed up for Doc Lucky's Yo-Yo Talk, please make sure you do. Also, make sure you sign up for our Instagram. We post interesting yo-yos all the time, and it's on a regular basis. That is Doc underscore Lucky's underscore Yo-Yo underscore Talk. And also, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. That would be, I know this is going to sound as a shock, but it's crazily labeled Doc Lucky's Yo-Yo Talk. So make sure you sign up for those. We definitely need to have a few more subscribers on that so YouTube doesn't kick us off. Those are where we archive all of our, lo uh, all of our old episodes, and we have a few bonus features on there, too. And finally, remember, you can never have too many yo-yos. This is Doc Lucky signing off until next week. Same yo-yo time, same yo-yo channel.